One of the many challenges that students and teachers face is how to organize and turn in this digital work. What we've done with Equatio's Math Space is given teachers the ability to create math spaces in a one-to-one -one learning environment. I'd like you to open Chrome and open a new tab and type in equatio.texthelp.com. You may be forced to authenticate, and once you're inside of Equatio's teacher dashboard, you will see that I, Louis Shanafelt, have several math spaces that I've already created in advance to this demo. Now, obviously, if it's your first time in here, you will have no math spaces, and you can simply click on New Space to begin creating. I wanted to show you a couple that I've already pre-made to give you an example of what these math spaces look like. This particular example is giving students a fraction wheel and allowing Equatio's math space to shade in these items where students can express what they see with the fraction wheel. So I can easily open up Equation Editor and type in, for example, on the first one, 3 front slash 5, and insert the math so I can use Equatio's math space to show mastery for a specific standard. Now, let's go look at another example. I can easily hop over here and look at some polygons that I've put into a math space. I have then opened up the Smart Shape tool and inserted a protractor. So I can come over here and line up my protractor and measure the angle for this particular object. So I can easily go over to Equation Editor and say 60 degrees. Insert that math, and I might want to move my protractor and bring 60 degrees over to show that I've measured that angle. These are just some of the ways that we can use Equatio's Math Space to show mastery and understanding of specific math topics. Take a look at this example where we can allow students to interact with clocks, and students could show mastery by simply placing the clock hands and using the selector tool to drag, for example, and turn to show 820. Students would be able to use these arrows to show the ability that they can tell time. Another example, if we increase the rigor here just a little bit, is we allow fifth grade students, for example, to show that they understand how to find the volume of a cone. Notice that I have gone into shapes and I've gone and found a cone. So I can select the cone and then what I would do is I would go back here and I would select a line. The line would allow me to draw the line. The numbers can be inputted through the equation editor and I can show the radius and height of these objects. I can then provide the volume and the instructions here for students. Once I have my math space created, I love this button up here that allows me the ability to share this work with students. So I have two options. I can make a copy for every student in the class, or I can make a copy for every student and expect them to turn this in. I'm going to select option two and hit continue. Now, once I get to this screen, I will see that Equatio has provided a unique URL, which I need to now get to my students. So I can copy this to the clipboard, or I can send this off to Google Classroom if that is the manner in which you share assignments and information to students. Maybe I want to use Canvas, Remind, or any other type of educational technology tool to share this link to students. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done. I'm going to open another tab up here, and I'm going to paste that link that I copied to my clipboard. Take a quick look at my Equatio Math Space. It looks like the one I just showed you. The main difference, however, is this button up here. This button up here I like to call my paper airplane. It shows me that I'm in student mode and I can submit this work back to my teacher. So I'm not going to actually select and find the radius, the height, and the actual volume for these objects. I'm just going to annotate here using the freehand drawing tool and say that I'm going to put high on my work and send this in to my teacher. Notice the dialog box pop up will say, congratulations, your work has been shared. I'm going to select OK. And then 
I'm going to get out of student mode and go back to my teacher dashboard. Take a look on the left hand side and I see something that says assignments. When I click on assignments, it's going to show a collection of all assignments that have been turned into me. Notice this one here has a blue one saying that I have a response that I've not yet graded. When I click on it, notice I'm going to see my name. I'm going to see a timestamp for the date and time that it was submitted. And I'm going to click on that assignment to give feedback. Notice here, I'm going to see that annotation that I just showed you on a previous screen, and I can leave feedback for my student and send it back to them. So for this example, I'm going to type in, after I select insert text, I'm going to type in, please show all of your work, period. Mr. Shanafelt. That way the student knows that I have annotated on the work, and I'm going to put over here, that I want them to resubmit. So I'm going to send this back to the student. It's going to give you, the teacher, the notification that it's been sent back. The student will then receive a notification typically above their taskbar or an email saying that they have received the assignment back from the teacher. Let's take another look at Equatio's math space from a design perspective. When I go to new space, I'm going to be given what I like to call a blank white canvas to create math on. I want to show you some of the neat features that we have inside of Equatio's math space, but before we do that, notice that I have all the other input methods available to me in this web app. These two buttons here are going to be the ones that are going to help you most with your design. Maybe I want to put something very simple such as a circle, and I can click here and change my color if I'd like. Or Maybe you're working with young children who are still learning how to count coins. So I can easily go to my shapes and put coins in. What if I needed two nickels? Well, I could click on the nickel, click copy, and click paste, and I can clone that nickel to make more nickels. So that's a great feature as well. I can also go here, and I can see a vast amount of other different types of uh, educational digital manipulatives that I can use with students. Maybe tangrams for spatial awareness activities, and I can separate those, or maybe I want to go back here and use something such as counting rods for students, because these are very, very helpful in a primary environment. So I can have students use their selector tool and move the counting rods. I can go back in here and I can find maybe something else. Maybe I want to start with some basic geometry and I can put a sphere in. Maybe I want to put something more science-based or more STEM-based in here. Maybe I want to put a battery and help students understand some of the different types of STEM items. I have DC motors, I have resistors, I have switches and diodes, or maybe I just want to put something along the lines of, um, let's say, an automobile. And maybe the automobile I want to put in my math space to gauge interest and watch what I can do here. Maybe I want to draw a line through my automobile and ask kids if they see a line of symmetry. Just an idea for you as you're exploring math space. The other object here that I want to touch on is smart shapes. Notice I have fraction bars. I have a protractor for my measuring of angles. I have coordinate planes. Maybe students are learning the axes, the X and Y. They can label that, or maybe you want to teach quadrants. Maybe I want a number line, so I'm going to select Smart Shapes, select Number Line, and draw a number line on my math space so students can understand, let's say, positive and negative numbers. So I can increase this and let students label the number line. And finally, let's take a look at the fraction circle. So I can come over here. And remember, you could always go and change these colors if you wanted to. I can always use my slider and pick a color that I like and then change these number of segments to meet my needs. So maybe I want to show six out of eight and then students could tell me what fraction aligns with this fraction circle. 
And finally, just as a quick reminder, remember, you, the teacher, have the power to share this math space however you would like. Uh, remember, I love to have my students turn in the work. It's a very quick way to check for understanding. So I can go to continue, grab that link, copy it to my clipboard, and share it in any manner and method that I would like. I hope you've enjoyed this demo for Equatio's MathSpace by TextHelp.